Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show from the delightful AshleyMadison.com studio. Yes, we are back. We've got Captain Keith Colburn with us from Deadliest Catch. This is a man's man, everyone, in case you didn't realize. In case you didn't realize that. Uh, it's good to have you. It, it, Thanks for joining us. You know what? It, it's almost humbling and kind of weird people say that, that stuff all the time. It's the like, man's oh, yeah, man, man You thing? really work. Oh, oh, yeah, I could never do that. You, you know, don't think like, so? Well, no, yeah, I know that, but still. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it, but it's still a little humbling, you know? Well, you, uh, you went, you used to be a, like a ski uh, bum in Tahoe, right? Yeah. When you, when you were young, you were a big skier, and then you just said, you just said one day, hey, I want to go be tougher than anyone in the world, so I'm going to go to Kodiak, Alaska with my buddy in a tent. And that's it. Pretty I'm gonna go. I'm just. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna go to Kodiak, hey, Alaska. I mean, how, how how do you come to that decision? Well, I you know I I don't know. I was sitting on the beach in Jamaica on vacation and decided, okay, that I'm I'm I, I don't know if I want to be a cook or a chef or whatever else. Uh huh. And oh, so, so you I, were going. You wanted to. No, I was I was gonna go to cooking school. I was gonna go to CIA, which is up in uh, upstate New York, Hyde Park. Uh, I yeah. had all my paperwork ready to go. I was gonna go to school. I was gonna enhance my whatever in the kitchen and, and maybe be a chef. And then I said, nah, wait, I'm, I'm going to try something else first. And that yeah. convinced my best friend who, of course, is just like me. He's not real smart, <laughs> you know, so you can pretty much yeah. tell him anything and he'll believe it. Oh. And, you know, we flew in and, you know, first day we, we landed, we took this little freight plane. You used to be able to get this little era, little freight plane, like, you know, the Indiana Jones freight plane, right? Oh, yeah. Into Kodiak, 7th of March, land in a blizzard, get out of the plane, a little shack for a uh, basically the airport, and and we walk out of there and we've got like fifty bucks. Did and, you, so wait, uh, you fly this plane from where? Like you from Anchorage. Okay, so you get to Anchorage how? Uh, by plane. Okay, by plane. Like you you left from like Sacramento or San Francisco or. I think we probably flew out of San Francisco yeah. or Reno or somewhere. I'm not sure where, but okay. so anyway, so we walk out of the airport and we see this giant like you know Kodiak grizzly bear covered in snow. It was like eight feet tall. We're like, oh man, we are screwed. Was it alive? No. Okay. It was. It, it, it was enough to say we're screwed. Okay. Did you realize you made a horrible error in locations? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and time of year. <laughs> yeah. Because then we got down to the harbor master and said, hey, can you watch our backpacks for us? We're, you know, we're we're here. He goes, you're here for what? Yeah. Uh, go well, we're here to work, man. We want to be fishermen. They're like, yeah. Hey, kids, you know what? You're a month early. Oh. There's no jobs. Wow. And but you know what? We, we persevered. We worked. Pound the docks in the snow and slept in the tent, and we finally found jobs. So you were literally in a tent. You you brought a tent, and that was your shelter. That was our shelter in Kodiak, Alaska, where yeah, where the the Kodiak bears are. They're the biggest bears. I mean, they're they're brown bears, but they're the biggest version. They're, gi- of, they're of the brown bears, yeah. like the grizzly bears. Their heads are bigger. Are than, smaller. The heads are bigger than yours. Yeah, okay? which is amazing. <laughs> Unimaginable, really. Yeah. It's named for Kodiak bears. Yeah. It's it's named for Kodiak, like the like brown bears. You've got brown bears and you've got black bears, right? Right. And then you've got different, just I don't know, subspecies, or they just depending on where they live, they're, they're considered grizzly or yeah. brown or Kodiak. And the yeah. Kodiak ones they're, are the biggest. They're the biggest because they, they have so much salmon, right? Exactly. You get anywhere up and down the Aleutian chain, you have brown bears kodiak they're brown bears as well but they're they're huge i mean yeah. they're like you know their heads are like this big their claws are like that it's like you don't want to get near them but and so you, know. you decided to just live among them in a tent <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it was march all right we, were, we figured you know the only good the only thing we planned out well was that we figured they'd still be sleeping uh so, well yeah. maybe right when yeah. do they wake up from their about march 10th oh, oh, great. so we had like three <laughs> days three to get days a job of, yeah. yeah wow did you have a gun no. No? No. Did you a see any sword? bears? Did, no, did you have? we didn't see any bears when we were, until later in the year. But, yeah, that's, they're pretty impressive. Do you see them a lot? I mean, in that vicinity? Uh, like, how you many know, bears have you seen in your oh, life? Oh, you know what? I was salmon fishing one year, and I, it's a little 32-footer up in uh, Bristol Bay, and, I'm, I'm, and we're, dry, we're dry, right? It's only a little tiny boat. So I'm cleaning out the fish tanks and stuff, and all of a sudden I kind of smell something weird. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I pop my head up like this, and I look, and, like, right where you are, 
there's this bear that's like, you know, all of eight feet tall wow. with his paws up on the rail looking over at me like yeah. right there, wow. sniffing around going, huh. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Smelled the fish guts? <laughs> I don't know what he smelled, but I'll yeah. tell you what, I was moving real quick. But oh, you smelled it to first? Get to, <laughs> yeah. Wow. What did he smell like? Yeah. Not There's, quite as bad as a walrus, but they smell bad. Walruses smell bad? Oh, yeah. They're so cute, oh, too. Oh, they smell like a sea lion. Like, when you go, like, in San Francisco, when you're down, like, at the at the uh, Pier 39 or whatever, and you go to where all the sea lions are laying out on the, the docks. Oh, on the floats. They've taken yeah. over the floats. Is that yeah. what the, is that what it smells like? Pretty much. Because that is horrendous. Or worse. Yeah, wild I mean, that's fish like a, animal. It's like, yeah, it's like fish and, like, the worst Fun athlete's it's, foot. It's funky. Yeah, like B.O. Yeah. athlete's foot, fish guts, all it's a little garlic in there, <laughs> you know, thrown in. Well, together. that's because all the Italians Clam. in San Francisco, you know, they migrate, right? I guess, yeah. yeah. Oh. It, yeah. Well, at least, you, at least you got away from the bad smell and went onto a boat and went crabbing. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, man, uh, the, uh, I, I, the bear thing fascinates me, but then crab uh, is fascinating as well. And what you do there, I mean, how do you go from working the docks in the snow to uh, being a, a captain uh, of your own vessel, getting, you know, millions of uh, crabs in there? I mean, that's a lucrative gig. Oh, yeah. No, I do well. Yeah. I mean, I, I own my own boat now. The Wizard's one of the biggest boats in the Bering Sea. We catch a, you know, in the, two years ago, we caught over 3 million pounds of crab. My this goodness. last year, we caught close to 2 million pounds of crab. I mean, it's... How many times know, have you been bitten? Bitten? Or clawed, whatever they do. Yeah, whatever they okay, do. Okay, well, you're getting close, Pinch. all right? What do they do? <laughs> when they pinch him? There you oh, go. Yeah. Good job, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've had them, but not yeah. the kind you catch. So. Yeah, when's the last time you got <laughs> scratched? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, but no, I mean, the progression from just showing up like a skier kid in a tent to where you are now, I mean, that's, that's a really modern-day success story, don't you think? It, it, it is, but, you know, initially it was pure desperation because I had no money. Yeah. And so the job I took, the guy said, he goes, okay, listen, we'll give you room and board. You can sleep on the boat. You're going to work about 12 to 18 hours a day. And you won't make any money for six weeks. Mm. And we got room for two of you. So me and my best friend said, okay, well, we got the tent or we got a boat. Mm -hmm. what, what are we going to do? So we opted for the boat. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, ultimately we ended up making a bunch of money. Yeah. But then you have to spend <laughs> a certain amount of time aboard a vessel, don't you? Like, like to work your way through the ranks to be a captain. I mean, there's... There's a lot of uh, positions below that that you have to work your way through, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, I started, literally, I started in the bilge, man. I started at the very bottom of the boat mucking everything up. So you're, like, pumping out, out the, the toilets. No, worse than the toilets. Really? Yeah. How, I mean, how, just like this stuff Yeah, that's... you graduate to the toilets, wow. okay? You start way lower than that. What is in there that that's worse than a... Oh, the boat I worked on was, it had been tied up for three years, okay? The King Crab Fisheries crashed in 19, uh, 1981, okay? Shut them down. And 1984, 85, they opened back up again. Well, there were tons of people that invested in the crab fisheries because it was like, you know, spend a million bucks on a boat, make a million dollars one year, pay it off one year. Mm. Well, the thing is, is, you know, as with every good, you know, like dot-com style investment, yeah. you know, something's going to happen. Well, something happened. It's called, the, you know, the ecosystem and the environment, you know. There was a mm -hmm. prolific spawn of crab, and they multiplied in numerous numbers, and there weren't any recruits coming. So um, this boat had been tied up for three years. It, 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 it was literally rotting at the dock for three years, and they needed two really stupid kids uh. to do all the nastiest jobs on the planet. I mean, you know, and so... People always ask me all the time, said, hey, man, you, did you ever think, you know, you'd be, like, on TV and a star and everything? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, man, absolutely, you know. That, you know, first week I'm sitting there, like, waist deep in this, like, three-year-old, you know, fish, black, nasty, gurry. I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, Ugh. this is going to lead to is something big called? one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a rock star sometime. It's called gurry? Could, like, I mean, I, I understand that stuff's been sitting in there soaking in the bottom of the boat for three years. The gurry with is... fish and... Whatever muck works its way through the... Yeah. Curry is basically, you know, a combination of the slime that comes off the fish, maybe a couple scales mixed in, a few entrails, uh -huh. and uh, just 
pretty much nasty ass stuff. Wow. Mm. So you adjusted to the disgusting odors that you're gonna have to deal with in this line of work. Yeah. It, pretty quickly, yeah. Wow. So crabs don't smell as bad because at least they're alive, right? Oh no, crab. In fact, you know what? We're, this sounds strange, but you know what? When we're on really big numbers, there is a distinct smell to king crab that I, I can't describe it. It smells like nothing else on the planet. But you know, when when you're smelling it, the pots are full. You know what that smells like? Money. Mm, yeah. Because I mean, when we're on them and we're doing well, I mean, it's like you know, I mean, as the captain and owner of the boat, I can make thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars in an hour. Wow. Do you yeah. feel bad for the crabs? Cause I eat crabs, don't get me wrong, but I always feel bad because they're piled up. So I'm like, that must be so uncomfortable in that little pot. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not bad. You know, it's like we take them out of a little condominium and then we put them in like, you know, a track, a track home or double wide and smash them in there. And those are our live tanks. Yeah. I always feel bad for them, but I, then, I, then I order them because they're oh, quite they're yummy. They're my favorite. Crabs, uh, they're just the best. Um, How do you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How do you catch them? What do you just put something down there and they walk into it? Exactly. That is it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're a natural. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just throw it down there. They just walk right in. Yeah. What, what, is, what is the way though? Like, don't you yeah, bait them like, in? It's like a stripper hitchhiking down the road. Man. You know, it's gonna get a ride, no problem, right? <laughs> What's the best way to get a crab? How, how do yeah, you get rain? How big are these? Uh... Oh, Condos, big, the, big, the, big. The, oh, the well, the traps. crab pots. Yeah. They're pots. You know, East Coast. Lobstermen, those are traps. Ah. West Coast, those are pots. pots. Okay. But so, <clears throat> you know, they're seven feet by seven feet by about three feet. And how many of those do you put out at a time? Uh, anywhere from, you know, depending on the boat size, 100 to 250. I usually carry about over 200 pots. Jeez. And how long do you leave them out? 36 hours, sometimes two days, just over two days. Wow. And then the interim, I mean, the time in between is basically traveling to the That's when the strippers show up. For... Yeah, just... <laughs> uh, Piling in, man. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. How do you get them in, though? What do you what, what do you put in there that, like, makes them go in there? And how do they not get back out? Uh, we put... <laughs> can't help myself. Um, no, <laughs> I was going to say Chippendale, guys. That's what, that's what brings the strippers in, but that's, the, uh, that's bad. Um, no, we put bait in the pot. You know, we grind up herring and that's oily and that kind of is like your long range bait right that kind of keeps fishing for a couple of days and then we'll put codfish fresh big bloody codfish we cut up and that's what they come in that's like we call it hang bait but the hang bait is basically what they chew on right so they they get in the pot they start eating and then a frenzy starts basically and next thing you know they just attack the pot and they just start piling in a king crab i i heard something about how when you know like the mayflower came over on the east coast the lobsters were so gigantic I, they were you know they don't stop growing uh and they just don't die unless they're killed off by something else is it the same with with king crab like they can just grow indefinitely <clears throat> no king crab are, are different they're not like lobster i mean lobster is that true um, though about lobster like they absolutely. can grow forever yeah i was i was at the boston fish show a few years ago and they had one that was like 150 years old or something wow and thing was probably about 30 40 pounds I mean, yeah it was just it was like a dinosaur i've heard i've heard of ones yeah. like 30 40 pounds yeah. but I, but like back when the the first like the pilgrim showed up because there were no natural predators for these things when the humans weren't there yet, uh, the, the they would grow to like the size like kraken, like they were out there like six feet long. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's true? I, it probably is because I mean, why were yeah, they eating turkey and corn and stuff for Thanksgiving instead of lobster if they're like crawling up and down the beach? Uh, I don't know. Well, I they mean, were prisoner was... food. They were prisoner food back then because they were so abundant. I, this is just what I... Did read. nobody eat, like, know. did no other natural things eat them, though? No. Are we the first things Apparently to figure not. out they're terrific Is tasting? that the same with crab? Like, what eats a crab oh. besides us? Um, well, when they're small, everything. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, they're like little, you know, protozoic type of things, you know, up yeah. in the food column. So they're like everybody's meal. And then as they get a little bit bigger, then, you know, cod, halibut, sole... There's all kinds of predators for them, but once the even with those spiky shells, yeah, and the, the stuff, king crab. Once that? the king crab get to be, you know, anywhere from five to ten, twelve pounds, then pretty much they're kind of the tough guys on the bottom. You know, yeah. nobody's nobody's gonna really mess with them at that point. Wow, five to ten pounds. I I don't think I've ever 
Oh, or 20 one, pounds. I've seen like, them. I'm seeing them close to 20 pounds. I mean, at 20 pounds, they're like, you know, seven feet across. Wow. I mean, the legs are that big round. They're, they're impressive. You've got, wow, that's amazing. Now, do they have, when they molt, you know, like uh, on the East Coast, they have what they call chicken lobsters, where they're kind of, they're shedders. Shedders. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've heard that we never get to see them as the general public because everyone who's trapping them just keeps them for themselves because they're so good. Do you guys end up having shedders or whatever like that? No. Our, <clears throat> and that's why people ask, why do you only fish in the winter? Because we fish from October until April. And the reason we only fish from October to April is because we don't fish them when they're shedding their shell, when they're mating, when they're reproducing, when they're doing all their, their funky stuff, right? Yeah. And so by the fall, they start to, you know, the first thing they do is once they shed their shell, they, there's no meat inside. I mean, their whole body is they're feeding as fast as they can to build that you know recalcify that shell uh, you know build up their armor plating and so uh, there isn't a lot of meat in the shell initially then it starts to build up you know uh, but the difference between lobster and crab is that you know crab you can you can catch a crab that hasn't shed its shell it might be a two or three year skip molt it might be a 10 pound crab and it's just as delicious as you know a legal size crab six and a half inch crab uh, Right. right. Um, whereas, you know, lobster, and I've learned this in the last couple of years because I rode my bicycle up and down the coast of Maine, you know, the shedders are really, they're really good, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't, but they can't market them because they don't travel well. They don't, they can't ship them. Oh, okay. So, you know, you want to get some shedders, you want to get some of that, the lobster, it's a little bit, you know, moi more moist and succulent. Yeah. Go to Maine in uh, June and July. Okay. How long does it take them to regrow it? That's got to suck while you're waiting for your shell to grow back. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that a whole season? No, no, it happens within a couple months. Oh, yeah. They, they can be eaten by anything in that in that time period, probably. Oh, yeah. No, when, when, when they first molt or shed their shell, they're almost like gelatinous. Yeah, right. There's almost nothing to that. Jellyfish. To them. Down there. Exactly. Wow. Jellyfish with legs down there. So that's the only time that the really big king crab are vulnerable to anything down there, you know, bottom fish. Do you like, like being, I keep mentioning the East Coast, I feel like such a homer in that respect, but I, do you like certain crab better than other crabs, taste wise? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, are you, are you biased towards the king crabs or do you, totally. are you biased? You're, what do you think of blue crab? Cause on the East Coast, we think blue crabs are, are the best out there. Yeah. Come on. You scoff at the blue crab. <laughs> that was so like trash. Because they're so say. small. They, they, they screwed up on that whole genus species thing. When they, <laughs> <laughs> now, blue crab are good, but you know, it, it's usually. They're a lot it's of like, work. And it's, for it, a, yeah, meat. It, there's not a lot, it's a lot of work, and they're, quite frankly, I think they're bland. Really? Yeah. See, it's compared to a king crab, the meat is more bland. Absolutely. Blue. Wow. Is yeah. crab stick <clears throat> as good as crab? Crab stick? Isn't that that fake crab stuff? <laughs> yeah. I get that in real Pollock. crap. Yeah. 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 What do you think about Pollock? I mean, that's kind of like intruding in your realm with fakeness. Oh, you're talking about Surimi. I don't even know what that is. No, that's the, like fake. The, that's fake. That's fake crab. Yeah, the, yeah, like yeah. the Pollock. Like it's fish that they just yeah. shape. It's, like a, you know what? It, it, it's um, it's not crab. No. No. It doesn't even taste close to it. Probably no, not I mean, to it, an, the expert. And you know what? Like, you, you, you turn a fish into silly putty and then put some red dye in it and call it crab. I mean, come on. What do you think? Yeah. When no, you're on you're the right. boat, do you eat crab or are you just so sick of looking at them you want anything but that? Well, we eat crab periodically, but, you know, more times than not, we're just eating whatever we can get out in the freezer. The guys are cooking up something. Is it, more, is, it, is it more profitable to keep the crab that, you know, like, do you, do you not want to eat the profit away and so you, you like, make a rule with the, the men, like, don't even yeah. think about it. It's like, don't get high on your own supply yeah, of right. crabs. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're cutting into the profits. Yeah. Well, we'll put it this way. You know, um, my boat holds over 400,000 pounds of crab. And we, fill, <laughs> and we, wow, and we okay. filled the boat in yeah. less than four days before. So I'll tell you what. I mean, you would need, like, an army. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> an army yeah. on deck to even cut into the profit margin. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we we've got to take a break, but we'll have uh, we'll have more Captain Keith Colburn after this. Um, but first, we're gonna check our uh, Ashley Madison accounts, <laughs> <laughs> and also <laughs> our listeners are winning crazy money at DraftKings.com. Baseball's 
Baseball fantasy baseball's back, and you do not want to miss what's happening over at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-day baseball site. Fantasy baseball at DraftKings is getting huge. Anyone can enter with just a few bucks and win a ton of cash. Listen to these results. One guy turned 11 bucks into 4,000. Another player won 100 grand his first time ever playing. A guy even won a million bucks at DraftKings. Seriously. One million dollars in one day playing fantasy. DraftKings takes watching baseball to a whole new level. Now you can win instant cash every day, every game. It's easy. DraftKings is one day fantasy baseball. That means no season long commitments, no being stuck with players, just instant cash every day. Right now, DraftKings is letting our listeners play for free. Yeah. Free to win real cash. Enter Artie, A R T I E, today at DraftKings.com and get free entry into a massive contest happening this Friday. They're awarding over 400 grand in cash prizes. 400 grand. It's this Friday and free spots are going quick. So enter A R T I E now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.